Hi, in this video we're going to talk about how to enable 802.1x networking, either Wi-Fi or Ethernet, to macOS clients leveraging Centrify and your Windows infrastructure. This first video is going to talk about the checklists that we need to make sure that are done in order to get this going. Uh, a lot of people that are looking to test this uh, bump into a lot of hits on the road especially because this covers too many things. It covers Active Directory knowledge, group policy knowledge. You have to know about PKI. You have to know about network policy service. So most likely this knowledge is not going to be concentrated in a single person. So, um, you know, when things are complicated, just use a checklist. Okay. So the basic checklist start like, starts like this. We need to have a, a Mac OS system that is centrified and that the agent is connected. Believe it or not, uh, we bump into people sometimes that they want to go and test these things and the computer's not even on the network. So how do you know if, you know, if a system is, is running uh, AD Info? And, and it'll show you basically, hey, you know, uh, I'm, this is joined to the domain and it's connected. So we have a centrified Mac here. Another way is to find out, okay, I want to know all, you know, AD users, AD query user is going to show me all the population that I have in my Active Directory. So going back to our checklist here, um, oh, of course, we want to make sure that it's connected. You saw that it's connected, but you can do a, a, an AD info minus M and it's going to tell you it's connected or disconnected. Um, in my environment, basically what I have, I have this Mac that I'm connected uh, remotely. This machine is one of my old MacBooks. It's connected via Ethernet. Um, at this point, basically, there's you know, there's no Wi-Fi profiles that have been defined uh, or anything saved in here. So if I look at Wi-Fi, no network selected. If I look at advanced, there's nothing in here. Okay. So let's go back to our checklist. So I'm going to go back to app two. And uh, so what is next? So now let's talk about PKI. So what is PKI? PKI is a mechanism to uh, provide um, asymmetric encryption for the purposes of non-repudiation, encryption, authentication, and all that stuff. But it requires on a trust chain. So you have to have an infrastructure, which uh, Active Directory provides, is uh, the Active Directory Certificate Services. And you, know, you have to have a system that is typically called the root CA. For PKI, you need to have a proper assurance, talk to experts. Typically, you have an RSM device, but because uh, PKI is a, is a tricky thing and it's uh, very important to get right. So what I want to make sure is there's already a root CA. I'm using the Microsoft test lab guide. So as part of, you know, the deployment of the test lab guide automatically, the, the root CA is deployed to all machines. So if I look at in here, I have the corp dash DC one dash CA has been deployed. So that means that this is a, certificate authority that I trust. Certificates issued by this certificate authority are going to be trusts in this enterprise. Another thing that we need to make sure is that, um, you know, the, you know, the network policy service, my radio service, and if you look in here, app two is my network policy service, that it has a certificate as well uh, for, uh, you know, for the purposes of client or server authentication. So I can take a look at this and notice that I have several certificates that are usable. Notice that you can see the template that issued the certificate. So I have one from the computer template and another one from one that I created for the Centrify auto enroll. Um, another thing uh, that we need to make sure is, and there's a lab on this before that you should have watched, is that a certificate was issued to the Mac. So the two, the, the two checks that we need to do, we're going to check the again. So on the Mac, I'm going to go ahead and see, I'm going to go to the keychain access and notice that we have both the root CA and a certificate that was issued, um, you know, to the, the MacBook. In this particular case, if I look at the details of the certificate, you know, it will be easy to see the common name in this case is composed from the UPN and a lot of the all additional information, including the NT name of the machine. So if you notice right here, there, there's the name. 
what it's really important is because sometimes computers get multiple certificates and there's multiple versions of the template is that this particular certificate was issued based on that template and the only way for us to find out is by looking at the certificate authority and looking at the issued certificates I'm gonna go down to the very last and I want what I want to make sure is that for the computer called MacBook that the certificate that was used is actually the auto enroll max tem template which is the template that I created why is that template so important you may say that is because the template that I created has the proper attributes this is really important the template name it does have the subject name with the user principal name set up it also has uh, the extensions server and client authentication and it's allowed for my Mac workstations to be able to enroll in auto enroll so all those things need to be in play in order for the uh, the PKA section of the checklist to work. So with that in, in mind, we've checked that we have the root CA, we checked the policy services running, we checked that the proper certificate was provisioned to the max and that the root CA is also there. We checked um, uh, that the uh, auto enrollment GPO was deployed because we saw the certificate and that certificate in the Mac is based on the proper template. In the next video we're going to continue the checklist and we're going to do the network and uh, uh, checklist settings. Okay.